Okay, I'm back again. Sorry about that. Someone came over. Okay, so the example that she gives, like when we're when well, when we get in an argument, you're gonna blurt out the gender, and I was like, how often do I get in an argument? Why would that be your go-to examples? Like when we get into an argument, you're going to blurt out the gender. I would think that she would have been like, I thought she was going to say, well, you are going to tell me because I know you're going to get really excited and you're just going to end up telling me. But she made it seem like he would tell her out of anger, you know, just to be spiteful. He would blurt out the gender. That's not cool, Liberic. Also, another issue they have is the pregnancy. So Liberic talked about how um, because they were talking about the Holtz having baby number five and then someone said something about LeBaric and Destiny having oh LeBaric himself was like well I can't wait for baby number two and then um, Destiny was like well can we get out baby number one before we start even thinking about baby number two and then LeBaric said well you have complete control over baby number one and I want to have control over baby number two or something to that effect and so he talks about how she has had the complete control over this pregnancy as far as um the doctors, the facility, having a home birth versus a hospital birth, um, that she's been making all the decisions. And she's like, well, the baby's coming out of my body, so I think I should have, I have the right to make all the decisions. So that right there is really strange to me, you know, because I understand the baby is in the woman's body, but the man, especially the husband, the father of the child, has no say so at all on how his child comes into the world. I, I'm I just don't understand. I'm not saying he should control it, but I'm hoping they had a discussion about it. But I don't know. I would think that the father should have some kind of a input in the pregnancy as well. Not 100% input, but something. And so then they talked about the last name. Now, she does not carry his last name, and that's an issue for him. He wants his wife to carry his last name. And she said, well, her maiden name is a connection to her and I think a sibling that she had. I think she said a brother that... Um, is deceased now and so that's her connection to her mom and to her deceased brother i don't know if her mom is living or not and i'm thinking okay girl but why don't you hyphenate now you know the whole thing to me is this it's like so many people will get married but then they don't want nothing to do with what marriage is about compromise and um basically compromise because with the pregnancy they can compromise with the name they can compromise so why don't you just hyphenate your name you know whatever that's that's what I'm thinking would make your husband happy, I guess. Unless your husband doesn't even want you to hyphenate. Now, if he's not even willing to let you hyphenate and he just wants you to use his last name only, then that's a problem. He needs to understand that her maiden name has very, very special meaning to her. And so she should be able to hyphenate if, you know, she wanted to still use her maiden name and also, um, you know, use her married name. What's wrong with hyphenating? But whatever. Moving on. So Kimmy and her son Jalen are having a conversation in the living room and Jalen is about to graduate so she's basically wanting to know what are your immediate plans and he said that he really wanted to go into project management in construction I guess be the contractor or something like Marcel and um but Marcel wasn't willing to hire him because he doesn't have enough experience and I thought that was kind of cold because I would think that Marcel would offer him something for him to get the experience because if you can't get the experience from your family member who is doing the same thing that you aspire to do who are you going to get it from at least the family member knows how you are and maybe that's why marcel doesn't want to hire him on at all period because maybe marcel's like uh he might not be a good fit for my company because i don't know so but i thought well why wouldn't marcel want to help out you know take him on as an intern not an intern but um well kimmy said well maybe he could offer you something without pay uh or maybe a little bit of pay because you know the boy is venturing out on his own he's gonna want to have you know have an income and i don't know i just don't understand why marcel could could find nothing for him at all to do with his company while he's learning the trade earning a little bit of money you don't have to pay him the same thing that you would pay someone else with tons of experience have him do something with your company for him to kind of you know get the skills that he needs and maybe he'll be an asset to you in the future or to someone else but nothing at all and so kimmy said well you don't have to go with through marcel you can go find other contractors you know who might be willing to take you on so i hope that works out for him and his plan is to still stay with kimmy and kimmy was like well if you want to stay here you know you're gonna have some bills to pay around here so you know he needs to get a job she says she doesn't want real world to like really slap him in the face so she is trying to help him out 
that's good that's really good now we're going to the birthday party so here we are the big birthday party so maurice brings up as soon as you know everyone's there except for the scots letitia and marcel have not arrived so the question is are they going to arrive or aren't they now there's a scene with all the guys Liberic, sederic martel marcel no martel and Maurice. Marcel's not there yet with Tisha. He's not there. So once again, Marcel has to bring up old issues, uncomfortable issues. Like he would always bring up the affair. And now he's bringing up the, the situation where Tisha got kicked out of Melody's event. And he was telling Martel, hey, instead of, you know, calling security on her, why couldn't y'all just pull her to the side and just, you know, talk to her one on one and not let it escalate to the point where it got. And, um, Martel was like, you know, Melody was already on 10. So there was no way of de-escalating the situation. It was what it was. And then someone brought up, well, they asked Liberic. They're like, well, if you were at an event, because what's his name? Martel was upset that Kimmy ended up leaving with Tisha when Tisha was kicked out of the event. And, he, you know, he didn't like that. And so Maurice was trying to say, well, if you roll with somebody somewhere and that person gets kicked out you're gonna go with your friend you're gonna go with your buddy you're not gonna leave you're not gonna stay if your buddy got kicked out and like he asked liberic he was like liberic if you went somewhere you know me and you went somewhere and i kicked out wouldn't you come home w wouldn't you leave with me and liberic was like man it just depends are we at a club you know what we doing da, da, da. but so forget about liberic he had no answer but so Derek was like yeah if we came in together we're leaving together i'm not leaving my friend behind you know i'm not gonna let i'm not gonna stay if my friend gets kicked out so that was the consensus of the other guys was like you know if but the thing is is that tisha and kimmy did not leave together did not arrive together now if they would have came as one especially if they came in one car i understand kimmy leaving with her but they didn't come together and they didn't technically leave together kimmy left but she didn't leave with tisha i don't think she left with tisha tisha left kimmy walked her to her car Tisha got in her car and drove off. And I guess Kimmy left after that. She ended up leaving after that. I think she went back in and actually said goodbye to Melody. I don't remember. But they didn't come together. I don't know why they have to. They had to leave together. But Kimmy ended up leaving. But she didn't leave with Tisha. She left on her own. But she did leave soon after Tisha left. And whether she should have done that or not, I'm like, it doesn't even matter. She came for the event for Melody. Kimmy did what she had to do for melody she showed up she supported this scuffle happened tisha leaves soon after that kimmy left at least she came and she she supported what is she supposed to do stay there until the last guest leaves no so that's not even worth talking about so they talked about that and then um wouldn't you know the holds arrived so the holds show up and as soon as they showed up, Melody did greet Tisha, but it was a very, you know, short greeting. And um, Kimmy gave her the warmest greeting and the two men didn't talk to each other at all. Now, Marie Martel said that Marcel should have spoke to him because he's the one that paid for the party. So you would think that he would have he would have spoken to him first because he's, I guess, eating his food, throwing his bowling balls. He should have said something to Martel. Marcel says that Martel should have spoken to him first because he was get an invited guest and Martel should have greeted him, but neither one greeted the other. Fine. And so it was really awkward to watch because you have the mutual friends who really don't know what to do with themselves because these two main guys are not speaking to each other at all. So how are you going to have a fun bowling event when Two of the people are not even talking to each other and the people in the middle don't know who to talk to. It was just odd because I don't know if they were on the same team, but they were all bowling together. And then you, it was just really awkward and odd and stupid. And Martell is a baby. Martell should have just been like for this one night, this one to two hours, be civil. 
you don't have to be his best friend and constantly high five him whenever he gets a strike and hug him and all of that but be civil just talk to the damn man you invited him no sorry melody your wife invited him so this is your wife's doing so your wife invited him invited them just be civil just say just be like hey i know we got issues but just for this one night for the kids parties let's just put them aside and let's just bowl and be boys for an hour or two maybe even 45 minutes it's not gonna kill you martel because i know that marcel would have gone along with that marcel to me seems really really chill and he likes to kind of you know be involved with the drama but he's also kind of like I can kiss and make up. It's no big deal. It's no big deal to him. He's just like so laid back to me. To him, it's not. Like, he's like, yeah, we can talk. We can bowl. We can be boys. It's no big deal. It's all good. That's how I see him. Now, he didn't say that in the show, but that's how I see Marcel. But Martel just wants to hold on to this grudge. And he's just so, I don't know. Okay. So then we get to <laughs> Tisha and Mel. So Mel pulls Tisha to the side and says, hey, can we talk? Okay, Tisha's down. So they go into this little room, closed off, and they decide to have a conversation. And the funny thing about this conversation is that um, it started off really civil. So Mel thanked Tisha for coming and bringing the girls, and Tisha thanked Mel for being invited. And so then Tisha says, "Well, this is what I this is exactly what I was trying to do when I came to your event. I just wanted to show support and to tell you congratulations for your business endeavors." And Melody says, "Well, why didn't you just text me? You could you, you could have just sent me a text and say, "Hey, congratulations, whatever. Can I stop by to, you know, say thank you or I have a gift for you or whatever. Why don't you just text me before the event?" And then Tisha says, "Let's just I'm talking about the actual event, you know, that what went on at the event." And Melody was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The event. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And Melody says something about how Tisha was always coming to ruin her brand. And Tisha says, what brand do you have? And Melody says, you know, my whole women's empowerment. You know, like how, how, how I empowered you to get out your house. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> and that was where it ended. Okay, I don't even know if this is going to get posted because there are so many interruptions in this one. I have no idea. But that's where it ended. I thought that was just so funny when she said, you know, like how I empowered you to get out your house. Anyways, so that's the end of that. Thank you for stopping by. Come back again. Bye.